Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I turn a dollar part into a $24 part. Hang around. We're going to make a file in real time and show you how to make some serious money. So I stepped out of the shop today to go to lunch and I happened upon a, I decided to go to a Mexican restaurant and when I came out I noticed a store I've never been in before. It's called Mighty Dollar. It's kind of like Dollar Tree. Everything there is supposed to be a dollar but now it's a dollar and a quarter. Thanks. Uh, and uh, I said, well, they got the same kind of things. It's just, you know, the cheap stuff and I'm like, okay, what can I repurpose? So I started walking around and went over to their craft aisle and found this, uh, just a wood shadow box. Doesn't say what it is, wood shadow box. It's, and it already had the hardware on it, already had the little rope on it. It was $1.25. I'm like, okay, well, I can do something with that. I don't know what, but I can do something with it. So I picked up a couple of them and brought them back to the shop and got to thinking, I said, okay, I want to do something quick, something that's going to generate a lot of interest and I can make a you know good buck on. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? I'm getting ready to go to the light burn experience and I'm going to have a few things there and I want to show off some of my files. I'll be selling some things, but... Mainly, I want to show off the, my designs from HoboWithWood.com. So, if I'm going to show off my files from HoboWithWood.com, why not make something from HoboWithWood.com? Makes sense, right? So, let's jump over to the website real quick and uh, talk a little bit about it. Those of you who have had an account... Uh, you knew we were struggling. We finally got this working correctly. You can go up here. This is the home page. The home page will show you the latest products that I've posted. This will always, the top left will be always the most recent. So if you hop on here and you look and see, okay, well, that's the same thing I saw two days ago. Uh, you just wait a day. There'll be something different. But these are all the new products. And then if there's any specials, it'll be down here. Uh, or features but you can log into your account now and if you don't remember your password the password reset function works now so you can try to log in your account request a password reset and you will get it I've added a contact page here at the top menu there so you have if you can't remember hobo with wood at gmail.com you've got a contact page there you can go and fill out the contact form but there's also, and I'm going to move this up here to the top as well. Down here at the bottom is the search bar. I'm going to move it to the top or add another one. Right now I'm going to search for Halloween. A-J-L-L, -L, there we go, Halloween. Search. And results for Halloween. Here are my different Halloween files. I've got the Lantern, the Mandala, Four Layer Boo. It's not bad but in my five layer haunted house. Okay, that's the one we're gonna use. And it's a $1.95, uh, which of that $1.95, you know, practically half of that goes to PayPal, credit card fees, all that stuff. So I get maybe a buck out of that. But this is a really neat design. It's been on the website for a little while. A few of you have already bought it. And those who, of you who have had it, this is something to think about on how to use this file. Now, when you get the file, it comes with the artwork to put a frame around it. You can see if I can zoom in here. Uh, nope, can't do it. Is it? Well, nope. Okay, gotta work on that too. Make my images better. But here we're gonna leave this homemade frame off of it, and we're gonna put that 
in this. And with the magic of YouTube, that's what I've done. That is a square five layer design and it was easy enough to scale up to this. And I put in spacers between the layers in order to fill the void of the entire width of it because it's five layers. My material is 2.7, right under three, so it's about 15 millimeters. But this was about 21 or 22 millimeters. So I just used spacers to space that out and it just added more depth to it. Looks good. So that box cost me $1.25 plus my time in designing all that. It took about uh, 25 minutes on the laser to cut that out, all the layers and the spacers. And the spacers were just little two millimeter sticks that went behind each of the perimeters of the layers and only on the left and right side. No reason to do all four sides. So half hour or so on the laser, that's about 12 bucks for me time expense wise plus this so I've got you know uh, and a little bit of lacquer a dollar I'm, I might have fifteen dollars if that tied up in this total cost not just material cost but time labor total cost around fifteen bucks and if you've watched my video what should I sell this for what do we do with items that are between ten and twenty bucks a cost double them so this would be something I'd put $29.95 for on the sticker, on the asking price. And in a show, I might put it, you know, uh, 10 or 15% off and sell it for like $24.95, something like that. Uh, but that's a really neat way to turn a dollar piece into something really unique. And they're not going to go and find it in a store anywhere. And I made it my own by putting my brand on there. But what we're going to do today, right now, in real time, is this is a Halloween 3D layer. We're going to do a Christmas design. Now, to save some time, I've already went and found all the clip art that I need. Uh, I'm going to do a, a Grinch. I'm going to do, uh, yeah, the Grinch. Bah Humbug. Or Humbug, not Bah Humbug. Humbug. So let's jump into Lightburn real quick. And as I said, I've already went, uh, I went online and just searched free silhouette SVG Grinch and found a couple of different ones. And I'm going to pull those in now. Uh, that's good. I'm going to cop or trace that. Make sure it all looks good. There we go, get his hat on there. And that looks good, say okay. I'm gonna move. Didn't get all that as good as I'd like to. But right now we're gonna move on. I just didn't pay enough attention to that. Now I'm gonna bring in the other silhouettes. Trace those. And the only ones I want here are the dog and the tree. Ungroup that. Delete those and get rid of all that. Pull the puppy dog over here. Select our tree, get the tree over here. Now we got a bunch of random mess just to select all of it and delete it all, get that out of the way. All right, now I've got three silhouettes that I wanna use. The Grinch, I could have done a better trace on, but that is okay because what we're gonna do right now, that's all grouped. I'm gonna do a quick offset of him I'm going to do an outward offset, outer shapes only, and let's do uh, two millimeters. And say okay. 
We don't want to delete the original objects. Done. Now we're going to put that on a cut path. I thought I told it to do outer shapes only. Undo. Oh, well, that's because it's a piss poor uh, tracing. I should have done a better job on the tracing. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've actually already created this. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to jump over here to my other light burn and just grab that image real quick. Copy. And go back to where we were at and paste that. That's better. And now let's just uh, get him so I can show you how we got where we're at there. And guys, you know my videos are mistakes and all. All right, so there is a really good tracing. So now if you select that one, it's all grouped. We're going to do an outward, outer shapes only. Put that on a cut path. And there you have a Grinch. And I'm going to engrave that instead of worry about trying to uh, paint it out and uh, do colors with it but my little box the little box is 110 the inner diameter is 110 millimeters so first thing I need to do is get a square that's 110 millimeters that's 95 so 110 all right now I need to create an offset of that because I need a frame so we're going to do offset and we're going to come in three millimeters. We're going to come inwards and a corner. And okay, done. Now I'm going to grab Mr. Grinch. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. All right, and now center him up. And now what I'm going to look for is to get this area here overlapping that inner offset I just created. I actually need to make sure he's all grouped with that. I think I grouped him, but we're going to do it again. Yeah, no, we didn't. All right, now he's grouped. We're going to have to ungroup him in a second, but I wanted to do that so I can see. And now I'm going to select him and just bring that down. Well, that was easy enough. And it really doesn't even matter if we bring it down below that, but I want to keep his shoes just above that bar right there. That'll work. Now ungroup it. And I'm going to select that inner offset that I created. Hold my shift button and select the offset cut of the Grinch. And I'm going to subtract that cut of the Grinch from the inner offset by using the Boolean tools or Boolean, Boolean, I don't know. I don't really care at this point. At, at this point in my career with light burn, it's Boolean. Uh, so now that just subtracted that from this whole piece that's now welded together. And that is my going to be my top layer. Now, and I should have went ahead and copied in my rectangle, but it's easy enough. We're going to do, uh, there you go, 110. And we're going to do an inward offset of 3 millimeters and say, okay, done. I'm actually going to need uh, two more copies of that, so I'm going to go ahead and go Control-D to duplicate it. And one more time, Control-D to duplicate it. All right. Now, I'm going to need um, Humbug. We're going to do Humbug. All caps. Cap locks on. Cap locks on. Hum, enter, and bug. And I don't really like the aerial font. Let's see.
and now I'm in the way. I need to move my text over here where I can see it. There we go. And go ahead and blow it up a little bit. That'll work. And it's too far apart. So I'm going to bring these closer by changing my horizontal space. Right now it's at zero. I want to bring them closer together. So I'm going to decrease, not my horizontal, my vertical. I'm going to decrease my vertical spacing until I bring those up there like so. Now I'm going to bring it down here. Go ahead and hold my control button and shrink it up a little bit. Now hold my shift key, select that, let's center it. Select the text and we're going to do an outward offset. Uh, of three millimeters, that'll look good. Say okay. And we're going to do corners, that looks good. All right, now I'm going to ungroup that. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select all those little pieces and delete those. All right, now we can see that this offset overlaps the inner offset of the square. So I'm going to select my square, hold my shift button, select the outer offset of hum. Try to. There we go. And now use my subtract tool over here subtract that that's done now my bug though is not connected now I could connect it in one of two areas I could connect it right here or I could connect it on the side and I think I'm gonna stay with the side now we're gonna cheat a little bit we're gonna select that offset of bug we're gonna use our node editing and I'm going to come over here, zoom in good and tight, and I'm going to select these four nodes right here. And I'm just going to use my arrow keys to bring those nodes out there over that. And then I'm going to come over here and grab these two nodes and do the same thing. There we go. Now I'm going to select the offset of the square hold my shift button and select that offset and subtract okay now that's starting to get welded up there now I'm going to ungroup all of that again and I'm going to select all of these little pieces delete and delete uh, I don't know if I want to delete that one or not. Let's look at that again. Undo. That one actually I might leave because that kind of, that square cut out kind of balances that square being put in. And I'm about symmetry. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to leave that like that. All right, so that layer is done. Now I'm going to grab my tree, bring my tree over here. Now I, I don't want it all crooked it, it should be kind of lopped like that instead of like that we're going to put the base kind of vertical or horizontal there at the bottom let's put it in a cut line and it's got some little anomalies in here we're going to ungroup everything about well, actually it is ungrouped what is all that about there we go just delete those in fact let's look for any more of them select there we go get rid of you There we go. All right, that's all cleaned up. Now that, now I've got an inner diameter or, or inner measurement of 110 millimeters, less three, so 106 or so, 104 millimeters. So I'm going to make this tree overall height. I've got my aspect ratio locked. I'm going to make the height initially 104 millimeters. And that's about the overall height of that inside there. 
but I don't want it to full distance. Let's do it at about 70% of that height. So now that I've got that, let's just do 70%. Done. Now let's bring it over here. Now where does it need to go? Now it's real easy to place these as you create these layers. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see. In fact, this will be a good way to tell about its size too because that's really going to be too small. So let's blow it up. Hold the control button and drag her up. And put her up here. That might be a little bit big. Let's take her down just a little bit. And bring her back. And what I'm looking at now is I'm looking to overlap the base right there and then a little bit over here so now I've got it attached on two corners um, actually I don't I think I'm, I'm gonna bring it on over here like this even I'm gonna take it outside the frame because I want it to be kind of off his shoulder like that all right but now you're asking well, wait a minute how's that gonna work that's not, not well that's okay I'm going to select that. Uh, actually, I'm not putting it in here. I'm just figuring out where it's going to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and select my square tool. And I'm going to come right here to that point where I get it touching the tree. And just draw a square out until I get to the corner right there. Done. Now, grab the tree and that square and drag it down here to this window. Grab that corner and bring it over here to there. There we go, snapped in place. Now I can get rid of that square. Hold my, or select my innermost offset there. Hold my shift button and select the tree and subtract. And there you go. Group those together. Now, where's my dog? There's my dog. I'm going to do the same thing with the dog. Let's put him on a cut line. Now, we're going to bring him up here and position him to his, what would that be? His left, our right. Now, he's nowhere near that big, and he's going to be back behind him. So we're going to draw him down a little bit, about like so. And we'll put him kind of high, about like, no, we can't do that. We got to, he's got to be touching. All right, so we'll put him there. Now I'll do the same thing. I'm going to select my square tool. I'm going to come over here and just grab any point that touches the dog. Come down here and and I guess it really don't matter if it touches the dog or not, as long as you create a square and then make sure you grab the square and the dog and then drag it all down here and then put that corner of your square. Right, snap, there you go. And now select that, delete that, select the innermost offset. Hold your shift button, select the dog, and subtract. But I, that's a little bit, that's not enough, so we're going to undo that. And I'm not going to change his position, I'm just going to lower him. There we go. About like that. And now I'll do the same thing and subtract and there's some garbage get rid of that okay and we probably should get rid of that little thing there because that could be more of a burn spot than a cut spot we'll just get rid of it because it's not relevant not necessary all right so that quick we just made a four-layer design. 
Now, if you want to see how that's going to look, we're going to make sure all this is grouped. Group him up. Group that up. I think I grouped that one. Yep. And make sure that's grouped. Group. All right. Now, I'll take, select that. And I'm going to put that in the very back. Uh, I'll actually put a spacer in and then put that not all the way against the back of that frame, but three millimeters off the back of it. But that'll be the back layer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duplicate that by holding control and hitting the letter D. And I'm going to put that on a tool path. And then hold my shift button and select this and tell it to go to center. All right. Then the next one will be the tree layer. Control D, duplicate it, put that on a tool path. And now come up here and tell it to go to center. And same thing here. Control D, duplicate it, put it on a tool path. And, oh, undo. There you go. Now, center. Done. So now, if you if you can see it, uh, you know what? I'm going to add another element. I'm going to put some falling Christmas lights on this design. That's what's missing up there. Uh, kind of draping, hanging off Christmas lights. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to add that to design. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have the clip art ready for it, but we're going to find that and add that, and that's going to be a really nice piece. I'll probably I'll probably do that and add it to this layer here with the tree. So this design, I'll finalize it and get it up on HubboWithWood.com, and this will be a nice multi-layer design that you can put into any frame that's you know square. Uh, any size you, you can buy the shadow boxes at Hobby Lobby and places that are just a foot square you can get them a six inch but these are a buck buck 25 at dollar mighty dollar but Dollar Tree they've got if you go into Dollar Tree they'll even have some that are painted that are, have already have artwork in them in fact let me grab this <clears throat> This is also at Mighty Dollar. It's a much larger, nice wooden frame. I mean, and, that, and that's hard wood. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's not. It's not a. It might be MDF, but it's got a uh, laminate over it. But it's that's solid. I mean, uh, but that. It's trash. I'll use that to do something similar with and make an even larger version of something like this. Dollar twenty-five. You can't make this for a dollar twenty-five. So I'll finish this humbug. Uh, in fact, I've got a version going off on the computer right now, and uh, I'll show you how these things go together. So with the magic of YouTube. We'll be right. Bam. Easy peasy. It looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Now let's show you how we got there. <laughs> All right. So this will go together really quick. I'm just going to take my glue and lay a bead down the left and right side. I open it first. Dum dum. Told you mistakes and all on this channel, guys and gals. Lay a bead right down the left side, right down the right side. And then put in one of my spacers. Place another one. Right. 
rinse and repeat. Alright, and the first layer of the design. Now, I want to show you all four of these stacked one on top of another without any spacing on them. I hope that's in the camera right. That doesn't look nearly as good as what the final outcome is going to look like. These spacers are really important. Let's put in our first piece. Kind of get up some of the squeeze out. This will dry clear, but we're going to get up what we can here. Okay. Now rinse and repeat. And this is going to do a couple of things by doing this. We're gluing those spacers in, and also this extra bead of glue is going to help hold this layer we just put in. In. All right. Let's put in some spacers. Next layer. I actually need some glue. And I think the last two will need to go without the spacer. Let's see. Puppy dog. And Mr. Grinch.
Okay. Now the glue is still all white and sappy looking, but it will dry clear. But it's already looking really good. All right. Ta-da! Now there's no finish on that. We'll sand that down a little bit and throw a little lacquer on there. And that That's a really neat project for a single piece of plywood, two bucks, a dollar twenty-five frame from Dollar Store, Mighty Dollar, whatever you got. Not bad. Guys, thanks for hanging around this long. I know my videos are long, but I, usually those that hang around and watch them, they usually learn something. Because uh, uh, someone commented, they're not long, they're thorough. I don't hop around and jump around like, oh, this is all in real time, more or less. But there's two really cool projects made with a $1.25 piece from the dollar store and easily sell for, you know, $24.95. Uh, I'll probably put a sticker of $29 on them and, like I said, uh, sell them for a few bucks off. But $1.25 for the frame one piece of Baltic birch, 12 by 12, to cut out each of those. Two bucks. Uh, not buying them on sale. And that's a decent project. It's really cool. I like it. So, for those who are still here, some of you might have caught it. As I said, all my mistakes are left in my videos. Usually I point them out. But there was a mistake in this one that I did not point out. And the first person to comment in the comment section down below what the mistake was, I will give you a 50% off store-wide coupon. You know what? I'll take that back. I'll do 75% off store-wide. So you could load up the whole cart and get 75% off the entire cart to the first person that can put in the comments what the major mistake I made was doing this design. So the challenge is up to you. Were you paying attention? <laughs> Guys, thank you for hanging around. Thank you, a huge, huge thank you to my patrons. Uh, the patrons uh, are greatly appreciated and greatly needed. <laughs> so thanks for watching and uh, We'll see you in the next video. We're going to continue getting ready for Lightburn Experience, and I'll be happy to share all of the things that I'm getting ready for, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>